America is very good at living in the myth of America. <laughs> you can't train away bias. You can't train away bigotry. He knows that he can step on the line where freedom of speech is and that the Supreme Court will not slap his hand away. And those people didn't even, haven't given black people reparations. Right. That needs to be addressed. We are living in literal serfdom. This is like a new medieval happening. This impacts everybody in the United States. They cannot stand us to have anything. And once they have established this as a precedent, they are going up the chain. It has nothing to do with the American people. Nothing. It is all about power. Power. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award winning Dr. Vibe Show, the home of Epic Conversations. And I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner. 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers. It's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And as always, I'd like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. You are watching State of Things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala. And unfortunately, Lala will not be with us tonight. She is not feeling well, but Aisha and Jill are waiting in the bullpen, ready to come out flying. But before we do a little bit of housework, housework, yeah, housework, I guess housework, we call that. As always, if you are up to it and you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show. Hit the, notif uh, the subscribe on YouTube and the notification button. That gets it out to more people. And also you get notified when I host epic conversations like this, Epic conversations like Black Canada Talking, epic conversations like The Morning Vibe, and epic conversations, The Dr. Vibe Show. And also follow The Dr. Vibe Show on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Also, too, if you haven't yet, one of the hottest rooms digitally going on is the State of Things Discord group. So if you haven't joined it yet, if you're up to it, please do. Lots of great conversations going on global conversations going on in the discord group so just email me at dr period vibe at the dr vibe com. and then finally if you are up to it and you're interested more than welcome to advertise your business product or service on this platform just email me again at dr period vibe at the dr vibe com. so with that out of the way let's bring out Two thirds of the three stars of the show with us. Aisha K. Staggers is here. Jill Jones is here. I'm going to put myself on the bottom because they're the queens. I'm the papa. There was an album by Gino Villi called Popper in Paradise. I'm the popper in paradise when I'm okay. hanging out with these ladies. You know, oh. brother to brother, popper in paradise. What's going on, ladies? Oh, <laughs> My it's been okay, actually. We've had a lot of hot days, um, but uh, you know, I so somehow messed up my leg and my foot. Yeah, so, what's been going on there? What happened? I really don't know. I I kind of exercise every day, uh, interval walking and running, and um, now my the last two days it's just my foot's been swollen, and uh, so I just you know have it elevated. Uh, and it sucks because um, it's just really bad, like really bad. Hmm. Well, we're so you're be hobbling around. Uh, I'm going to have to have people come and cart me places. Carry <laughs> 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 me. I, somehow, what do I see? Those, those is it rickshaw guys who like? I, I never That's been exactly what I need. Perfectly, I love rickshaws. So yes, I need a rickshaw <laughs> driver. <laughs> and in fact, I think they should bring rickshaws back. It would be nice to see in California. <laughs> well, uh, has, have either of you been in one of those? Yeah, I was in one. No. When? Oh, God, back in the 80s sometime. And and then there was like some really weird other time, more 
recent, uh, after 9-11, people had rickshaws out and were driving people from uh, from the Upper East Side to downtown. Come on. Don't ask me how it was like. And there were horses, too. So, yeah, it was a it was madness. I mean, you know, people. Uh, yeah, it was madness that day. Wow. wow. But you had wow. to get places because it wasn't easy. You couldn't really drive. It was like, oh, there's a rickshaw driver. I guess I'll have to. <laughs> you know. And then, is uh, that the thing in New York that uh, like it's like it looks like a horse and buggy, but it's like a wheelbarrow? He was this guy, yeah. And, and, and uh, okay, I have been in one in New York. Yeah, yeah. and so I mean, as like the old, the old proper one was back in the um, uh, like Thailand. Yeah, they're the yeah. originals, oh. but they did pretty well. Uh, seriously, you know how mm. fit you have to be to pull a rickshaw? Yeah. It's not As easy. You're sitting there, and I'm like going, "Oh my god, am I gonna like? Is he gonna be able to carry me?" Yeah, because because not only are you using your legs, you have to have good upper body and upper core body straight. for sure. Like your core has to be really good because you don't want your passenger <laughs> to be going up and down. You got to keep that balance. That's a heck of a workout. And you know, when you think about it, it's like in the height of like pandemonium. There's these jets flying over military jets. And you're in a rickshaw trying to get to Brooklyn. You know, it's like, it's just like for a minute. It's like, is Robin Williams going to come out and go, good morning, Vietnam? Like, it was, <laughs> like I'm not trying to be shady or anything. It was just, <laughs> it's a strange. Well, it's good stuff. Well, we got some family in the house and we really <sighs> appreciate the family. Uh, Jen is in the house. Hey, Hello, Jen. everyone. Uh, wig maniac, you're early today, which is beautiful. Yes. Good to see you. And I don't talk to wig maniac that much anymore because I got rid of my Twitter, by the way. So you can't put it up Whoa. tonight. Oh, yes, you talk. I saw that. So I deactivated. You're kidding everything. me. Got rid of it. No, I mean, I kept toying with, oh, I have all these people that I'm linked to. Then I was like, I don't want to have this. I don't, I don't want to be like associated. This is the time now to really stand for, you've got people standing in a hundred degree heat picketing and for their rights and stuff. And here I am dilly dallying around on Elon Musk's platform. It's such, I felt like such a hypocrite. So I was like, see you later. Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, I, 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 Aisha, you're a trendsetter because you were the first person to say goodbye to Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I, I was done. And, you know, it's intermittently I've gone back, but it has been little to no activity on my site. It, the only things I've kept were like DMs. And I've, I've like people have reached out to me there, but I don't even check it. Like I check it probably once every maybe two or three weeks. Yeah, I mean, I have none of that. I have no no page, no nothing, no nothing. Wow. I had wow. to I had to pull back though because it was it was affecting my health, you know, and 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 cutting things out to minimize my amount my frequency of seizures over the last couple of um, weeks. That was one of those things that had to go first, had to go. Okay. and then slowly I've been pulling back from all my other social media, and mm. kind of. Re Instagram is the only thing that I will like do or check. But I haven't posted in a while, um, except for like like I said, the um, DMs on Instagram. Other than that, I don't I don't do Facebook at all these days. I haven't like probably like in a year or so. Um, it's kind of changed. I'm going to tell you something. It's been nice to go back there and and revisit. I think some of the cuckoo birds have gone, and there's some really like your you know. It's been actually not bad with some informative posts that people have. I don't know something about the algorithm is at least I'm enjoying it for a long time. I hadn't been. You might want to check it out again because it's been sane a lot after coming off of like raw sewage uh, Twitter or now X. It was too much for me. I was like, this is and they were blocking me all the time. I couldn't deal with it. I was yeah. like, hey. I got to choose my poison. So it's either going to be social media or the news. I can only do one or the other. I can't do both. Mm -hmm. so, um, well, but, here's, but here's the question when which is less, talk, less toxic these days, social media or news? 
I know. Well, I've done this, I've done this too. I've pulled I've limited my number of hours on national Smart. And on on like Smart. MSNBC's the one that I watch. Smart. Limited the hours that I watch, and um, I haven't been paying as much attention to local news as I have the um, national news networks. So I was uh, like last night. I said, you know, maybe I'll just turn on the local news at eleven. I did. And apparently there was some kind of shooting in a place I like just, I had just left, like after I'd left. And I was like, wow. (laughs) I was like, wow, I was just, I was just there. And so, um, you know, you miss those kinds of things when you don't pay attention to local news. It's interesting you mention that because as I'm thinking now, the local a lot of local news is a lot of negative a lot of shootings a lot of stabbings like like here in toronto that we have an all news radio station and basically if you listen to how they they do the same basic news every half an hour say okay i got my half an hour i'm good it's repeated because they all are buying it on a market you know that so Right. Because so all I, these local news stations are owned by corporate news exactly. stations. There you so go. They, they have X they have a pattern, a format that they have Absolutely. to follow. So okay. I don't watch our local news as much as I pay attention more to the written the written stories about local news because I can pick and choose what I want to see. Okay. Some kid just catching up. Wig Maniac says it's a little oh, slow thing. Thank You're you. missed on Twitter though. <laughs> You're missed on Twitter. Uh, and a, a, a wonderful lady, Fiona Gobin, who is really? a great event planner up here in the greater Toronto area. Oh, we nice. were chatting before, she, and she goes, she she said, oh, you want to go for some something this evening for a bite to eat or something? And I said, no, I got a show. She goes, oh, so you're standing, standing me up for three ladies? I go, yeah, I am standing you up for three ladies. So great to have you here, Fiona. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great event planner. Great event planner. She goes, John, I will miss you on Twitter, Jill, but I get it. It's a cesspool. Yeah, it's a lot. Just and, It was just killing my vibe. And Fiona says, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I watched MS, probably said MSNBC. Yeah, I have. No, no, mainstream media. Mainstream media. Mainstream, sorry, mainstream media. Yeah. Sorry, my, my mistake. But yeah, I haven't. And it's actually, I haven't posted on Twitter in a minute. Like the only you thing is, I'm not, but I don't go on there. You know, it's gotten bad when it's gotten bad when Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are talking about fighting each other. Who wants to watch two nerds fight? (laughs) I do. (laughs) Why? 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 We know how nerds fight. All you gotta do is turn on on any news. I don't know. Zuckerberg's having some serious training from those UFC fighters. He's having training, but he hasn't bulked up any. You don't have to bulk up to be that kind of a, these kind of fighters. They're not. In fact, uh, Elon could learn a thing or two because that boy, he has not been anywhere. He hasn't, I mean, he, the only workout he gets is raising a fork to his mouth. That's about it. <laughs> That's about his, and it shows in a closet because he clearly doesn't get any vitamin D. I mean, I'll be more entertained seeing them fight in the stock market. No, I mean, yeah. I think that you know, it's in all jest aside. I think that because of this whole thing of what, like, what is mainstream media anymore anyway? You take your chances when you read anything about is it true or is it not true anymore? It's it's like even, you know, um, things, it, yeah, it's really like you take your chances. Who's to say that what you're watching on some little dumb, you know, little whatever, is the truth or not the truth. I think that's what's the saddest part about how it has the credibility of real journalism. Mm -hmm. It's destroyed, which means it destroys people's salaries. And that's not cool, in my opinion. It's like having just trashy people, everybody deciding that they can sing. They, all of that ruined the business. Well, you know, as, as someone who is a journalist, I think that for me, it's exhausting because once I read an article, I have to go and find the actual source materials yeah. and have a look at them myself to make sure. Um, so, for example, like on this on the Discord when we were talking about um, people who were um, not citizens being able to join police forces, I actually yeah. went and checked, 
I would actually went back and read the bill because the article was very misleading. It implies that, oh, people who are illegal can become police officers and carry guns, but that's not what the bill says at all. You know, and, and when you look at the history of the bill, it was it was co-signed, it was co-sponsored by quite a few, I think it's like five to seven Republicans in Illinois that or <laughs> Indiana, wherever it is, that signed on to this. So basically it, it was like, you know, people who are DACA, you know, come here as children and want to join the police force, they can. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that we allow we allow um, immigrants to join our military. So why not the police force? And also too, they have to pass an FBI check. So it's not like they didn't put specific things in that law, but the article, if you read the article, the article is designed to be inflammatory and get to those people who are like, oh, immigration's bad. Oh, they're invading and that kind of stuff because it left out the critical information. Okay. Well, we've had our warm up, the appetizer. Let's get into some of our conversation pieces. And uh, this one, we almost left it off. We replaced, we were going to talk about another story, but we're going to pull it off. The Maui fire. I I still haven't really sunk it in how serious this is. Mm. Like, yeah, it's, it's a real catastrophe. Yeah, I'm still trying to find out what the actual source of the fires were. I, I, I'm seeing how, I'm seeing more information about how their alarm system, their alert system, their public alert system didn't go off and yeah. it was fast yeah. spreading. And that and that's why, because it was spreading fast, they didn't get the warning. So a lot of people were caught off guard. I'd like to know what caused the fire. Yeah, that's what I, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm sort of wondering, how did this all start? They said there was a brush fire and that then the hurricane winds that were sort of off um, off the coast or whatever that were coming from a hurricane that was like 500 miles per hour. And it just created a firestorm through the towns and the cities. And I heard them mentioning that cities have to, and places have to start paying attention how they're taking care of their brush and their land and all of these things. However, if you ever go to Hawaii, it's kind of weird because they're always burning their fields properly when you need to burn them, like with sugar cane or however, every time I've been there. So it, I don't know entirely what they need, what that, what that report was about and if how much validity that had to any of it. I don't really think they know. I think the wind was one of the main issues because it was like coming from both and like it was coming from both sides of the island the wind mm -hmm. and so it, that was causing it to the the pace at which it would um spread was that the wind was you know part of the contributing factors to why it spread so fast but it took out a lot what would they say as of last count i think it was more than twenty thousand people without homes homes yeah like uh, and i and I'm just sort of, I always get fascinated how these fires can just go and they can't be put out. Yeah. But I don't know, they're, they're, I'm not trying to cut you off, but let's not forget no, no, no. what happened in Greece a couple of years back. And it was similar in, in a scale and in the way like you fight a fire on an island. I mean, right. we're now at a point where you know, those idiots in at the world global UN or whatever the f they're supposed to be doing when they go and have these meetings. We know for a fact that some of the islands like in Samoa and all the other countries along those ways are sinking. They're having some real, they're showing a lot of distress and stress on them. And what they really need to be doing is they have to be ramping up to protect and plan ahead and, and think like that. Because if it happened in Greece, it can happen anywhere. And those islands are very, what, there were only two uh, fire fire department like locations. Yeah. It was just not enough to fight all of it yeah. there. I mean, it was, and it just, it's just crazy. They said it just sort of came up. There wasn't enough warning for people. And so what was the, what were the weather those, you know, can we, can, can I just say something? Can we just have regular weather people without these weather bimbos? I really don't. <laughs> You don't lose me, but the the, the little outfits, it's got to go. I 
can't stand it. We still have that here in LA. We have the little bimbos talking about the weather and the meteorologists. I can't take them seriously. I honestly just like, I don't need to even see them. I only need to see somebody hitting a diagram of what's going on. I do not need to see a girl standing beside a screen anymore. Get rid of it. Because <laughs> you know what though? We used to have we used to have that for a minute, but the the um we, we, still have have we got this weatherman who, um, you know, had a hard time with his suit jackets buttoning. So he slimmed down some because I guess he became aware of it. But we have this one woman. I feel so bad for her because they always send her out in the absolute worst conditions. It's like blizzard. You know, her, she's out. She, they send her to hurricane weather. No, she's we're in Hollywood. Remember, guy. they all look like he, they all look like brat stalls. Our, See, our, our morning people do. And, our the, morning like, and all the, you know, and it's like, I'm like, I swear this girl's been doing this for 40 years. And it's like, you know, they like take them out of a tomb and put them up there. They've been, you know, I just, so that's what happened in Maui. I think that they said that there wasn't any kind of warning system. Okay. And also, well, too, I, it being an island, getting supplies there is a challenge. Yes. Yeah. It has been, always has been. It's like, yeah. Yeah, and, so and and then let's also say there are things that people are not supposed to have on islands, you know, that you don't bring, that you don't keep. Um, it might be at that level now where you start saying, hey, you know, candles, no, this, right. that, certain things. I mean, this was a very, La Haina is a very uh, historic area with a lot of like information in some of those um, buildings and stuff. I hope all of those have been digitized. But mm. more importantly, I know the people of Hawaii will will prevail, but you know, they had not been, this is just heartbreaking. Their animals, yeah. their, their jobs, their businesses, some of their loved ones, all of it. It's just wrong what happened. And I, I mean, it's heartbreaking. I had a fight at the house. So it even talking about this brings back a lot of trauma for me, even to know what it feels like to walk back and to see the remains. It's, 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 uh, it's something you never get over. Okay. I'm just going to pull some content from this article on the BBC. So at least 80 people are known to have died, but their fears this number will rise further with hundreds still accounted for. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to jump to another paragraph. Jeremy Greenberg, a senior official at the Federal, Man er Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has told the BBC that extra support being sent included urban search and rescue and fire suppression teams. Mr. Greenberg added that while close to 1,000 people are still yet to be contacted, some of those may be safe, but out of reach for a number of reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just go on a little bit here on this story. Yeah, the cost of rebuilding, rebuilding Maui has been estimated at $5.5 billion US. Yeah. According to the Pacific Disaster Center and FEMA, which is coordinating the relief effort to Hawaii from Washington, that is a massive well, reason. Remember, we had PG PG and E was responsible for our firestorm that we had through that campground. It did sort of the same type of movement where it just goes through blazes like really fast. This kind of felt a little bit like gas like a gas movement. It looked like that because it was in such areas, but I guess they'll let people know. I mean, I understand that the winds were coming, but who knows if there was some kind of shift uh, in the infrastructure, a minor, we don't really know, but yeah, yeah. that uh, there was something more, I think. This on feels the like something set to, in my opinion. It's, it's almost like somebody, Drove around, drove around the whole island lit, lit, littering gasoline and just set a fire and it just but we yeah. know how incompetent and how negligent our um our people are in our uh in our con edison pg and e and all those things on our grid they're very negligent here and they've been they commit so many crimes and kill so many people and they get away with it every time i mean they're still in business after all Let, let's just be honest it's there's something wrong with that so I wouldn't be surprised if there's something to that with their infrastructure. That so I'm just going to just gonna finish off the story on the BBC here. The last few paragraphs says, Hawaii's Attorney General 
has announced a, quote, comprehensive review, unquote, into how the authorities responded to the wildfires. It comes as questions mount on whether officials warned residents fast enough and if there were flaws in the early warning system. Hawaii Electric, the utility that provides service to 95% of Hawaii's residents, has been criticized for not shutting off power despite warnings that high winds could create dangerous fire conditions. Yes. We, we're we seeing like this big reveal on rich people and, and, it, and, and how the poor have often been overlooked um, and how money has been siphoned from infrastructures, from countries, from cities, from states. Um, and, and not enough has gone back into rebuilding. You know, they could, yeah, build back better, but they've had more than enough money over the years to have continually kept building. But we've had people who, Republicans, who have literally fleeced the United States of America. And there are so many things that are just bad. Like they are, they're not even modern, modern uses of things anymore. And I believe that there were probably things that probably needed to be fixed. I mean, that was a, I don't know, maybe the weather people didn't say anything because maybe that wasn't really what was driving it. Maybe it helped a little bit, but maybe that didn't drive this. All of a sudden there's a big fireball. I mean, you're walking down the street and people are like, oh my God, that sounds like something like Aisha said, something nefarious or something Something was not right. Yeah, and, and you know, the the other thing too is that if the attorney general is going after that, it they probably have some federal money to help them investigate and that the federal government, DOJ is going to investigate, but the federal government's going to give Hawaii that uh, $500 billion to, to rebuild, but they are going to collect their cash from somebody. All right. So we'll move on and our prayers and thoughts are with those in Hawaii. Completely. Um, I can't even imagine. I really, I really can't even imagine. So our prayers and thoughts go with them. And as we're coming, there's actually another conversation story that we'll have to save till next week that I just thought about right now. So more than enough to chat about tonight. But look, thanks everyone who's here live. A number of you are watching. And Wig Maniac says, we're still on Instagram so we can DM there. So Wig Maniac and Jill and, and Aisha, Wig Maniac yes. is the one to connect with you there. So we got it down. So our next conversation story, oh boy, America and race. Oh boy, America and race. It just can't Huge get out of its own way. <laughs> Huge brawl after black worker mobbed by white boaters in Alabama. Who won go on this first? I was going to say this. Lawn chairs are out here stunting like crazy. I mean, they got t-shirts. Jewelry purses. Um, they're making appearances at end of year uh, family reunions and church picnics and socials, and they've they've got appointments. And you know, next thing you know, they'll come out with an album called Back "Around and Find Out." But that that thing with that lawn chair has like taken off. It's like the the amount of memes and things behind this kind of lightened what happened, but. Um, you know, it was just, it was nice to see people not let that man just doing his job get his ass hit. I Jill? mean, it's, it's, it's really rather sad that, you know, these are the margins that, you know, Black people have to be excited about. Nah. It's really, really sad that... Um, that an obvious, um, you know, takedown we had, it was for all to see. And even in all the humor that we saw how people stuck together and white and white people came and defend, you know, were like, this was wrong, whatever. But it, it really took a lot that this is where the hill that you have to stand on in order to say, see, see, we're telling you the truth. It's not really because of, you know, it's like, I, I don't know, I'm speechless. This is 2023 and we've not made the world better. We've not made this country better. And it's really, you know, it's, it's shameful. 
I, I feel so bad that a 65 year old man, first of all, is still working and has to work, number one. Um, but this country is a big fail. It gets a big F from me. There's nothing that I can see anymore. I think like you guys know, I'm into astrology and everything, but I am telling you all of the big reveals are coming because it's like every, the transparency, you're starting to see how the threads were put together. You're starting to see that these good old boys come from a Trump rally and they're drunk. And first of all, why weren't they cited for being drunk and driving a boat? You know, I mean, what, where's that? All of them, all of them just for that alone. So, you know, I don't know. It's a sad day. It was great to see, you know, and everybody wants to make their merch and it's funny, but our point still doesn't get across. It just won't change anything for black people. Sorry. But you know, I mean, it's, it, it's Montgomery. Like, did anyone expect anything different? Has anybody been to Montgomery lately? Because I have, and it, it hasn't changed since they did the um, Selma to Montgomery march. That particular pier itself has a history rooted in slavery. It was a port where they brought um, slaves and did slave auctions. So it already had its story history. What I do appreciate is the fact that this interaction was caught on camera. Oh, yeah before the a punch was even thrown because okay. the first woman that was was just recording she just happened to be recording the boat going by mm -hmm. the, um and this guy he wasn't even security so we have to get that part right he's the co-captain co -captain of the um of the uh the boat ferry. That dock the ferry, oh, that the ferry. Dock. that was specifically there they were told multiple times to move to move it and there's there's that sense of entitlement. And they've done it before. They've done it before. Apparently, those that um, family has been a problem yeah. for for the people who work on that um, pier. And so um, they should be banned from the pier, like the whole they family. Should, they should be banned from the no. pier. But you know, the thing of it, the thing that made it. Um, a racial issue was the fact that these young entitled white men felt that they could tell this man who's just doing his job that they were not going to follow the rules and then did not expect him to take action. Because, you know, if the rule says, hey, don't park here, the next rule is the warning. The next rule that he has to follow is then I got to move it. Right. So my, my boat can die. They should have been banned. If they've been a multiple problem family, they should have been banned from returning. They should have not been able to dock their boats at that pier anywhere. But here, but here we are. And um, the the good thing that we are seeing is because there is um, video, the right people were being arrested and yeah. charged. Because the one thing that could have been a complete fail is for them to say, well, no, um, they just came, was to cry white tears. That would have been the complete fail. But the other thing that also helped was there was black law enforcement who listened to what the people were saying. It was kind of like down home fighting too. Like for me growing up in Ohio and Lebanon, this was kind of like down home fighting. There were no knives, there were no guns. So that was kind of mm -hmm. like interesting for me. So it was kind of like that old like, down home, this is, we all kick these people that, you know, it's, it was almost, it felt very 1950s. Um, it was so wild to see. And it was interesting to see, uh, you know, like I said, to, to see the guy with the chair it was, Hey, it was what he had to do. And, you know, and I think that, I mean, I think it's funny as like how and what, and the women and the everything, it just really spoke to me so clearly about yeah. how, and how the men would the men wouldn't fight like that woman, but the women well, this did. Was the yeah. docks where, like you know, slaves used to be embarked there, and and also Montgomery is such a symbolic place of our civil rights and the birth of so much there in in Alabama. So for me, this was a a God check. This was this was a God wink that happened. It was sort of like, and you know, y'all, I don't often go on about God too much, but. I thought this was a real like, 
here we go. I'm letting you know, like, you know what I mean? So for me, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. We're back to square one. I, I, but you know, the good thing, I, thought it was good. That I came out of it, it that for me, that was okay. Was the, that Okay, I'm having some. Is he freezing on your end? Too? Oh, okay. Yes, yes, she's freezing on my end. So you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull her off. Well, what were you gonna say about connection? No, the thing that I found, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say the thing that I found very interesting about this incident is the non-melanated men who just came in and attacked this elderly man yeah, instead of wonderful. trying to break up the scuffle. They just yeah. they just came in. Like, how did they know even what was going on? Why don't you be peacekeepers instead of uh, causing more aggravation? Like, yeah. it was just like, well, break it up. Go your separate ways. Thank you. But come in and attack. Like, I know. Not even, not even knowing, knowing about the situation. First thing, attack. It is very interesting, but we are at a primal state. It's like primal alert right now for everybody. Everybody is on such guard to fight immediately, and that's the scary thing and the sad thing because you know there there was like one white person trying to like intervene, and I was like, oh man, God, are are they going to have to like wear stuff like medics? wear in a war to say I'm on your side or like in the war, like I'm trying to help or, or, you know, and for vice versa, you know, there, we are at a very crucial, I don't know, very pivotal time. Well, it's, we got Aisha back. It's just, yeah, we I had know, a little July. blackout here. Quick flash. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, well, you never know. Maybe some, some people are watching us. They want to cut you, cut us off. You never know. You never know, right? No, 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 no. Before here, I just heard like loud thunder before that happened. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, it's yeah, we're having, remember, I said it was really humid here. So we're having a storm. Right. No, I, I think it, it just adds on to both what all three of you said, and Lala isn't with us tonight. It's just not safe being a melanated person in America. No. No, but this time there were no guns, which everybody left alive this time and i just read earlier today that uh there was another kind of thing in detroit another fight in detroit and instead of somebody pulling out a gun they got a lawn chair uh, and they were fighting with lawn chairs i mean you know that's gonna you know there's always people now just gonna overdo it but you know what? i'd rather they overdo it and fight that way instead of uh the guns, guns yeah. exactly 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 well Let's, um, well, hopefully the, the gentleman who got attacked, he is healing and going to be okay. And that due process will be taken for everyone who acted in a violent manner unnecessarily. Yeah. yeah. And I'm and I, I'm saying on melanated and non-melanated people, not just the non-melanated yeah. people, but were, because I saw during that video, I saw some interesting behavior by some melanated individuals, but we'll leave it I at know. that. I know, right? Yeah, it's but just like was, the man, who, the 65 year old man, he did do some interview yesterday. So I haven't seen it yet, but I want to go look at it. Okay. All right. Well, in our, our warm up, when we gonna when we covered the conversation topics, I, I guess sarcastically said that this gentleman is becoming Aisha's favorite politician. <laughs> I know, right? The Senate to suspends Orlando's area state attorney in second sacking of democratically elected prosecutor. <laughs> Aisha, please. America, start is this the guy you want to be president? So any because at this point, this man is running for president. This means that any elected official he doesn't like in the House or Senate, he will try and get rid of. What all he is going to do is take what he's done in Florida and do it on a bigger scale with the country as a whole and that is a problem that is something that it's like we can't we can't let this happen this is the second 
elected, duly elected, justly elected attorney um, for the state or a prosecutor that he removed. And he, in in the, the, it's like he, the charges were bogus, that the crime rates and the murder rate, the homicide rate, he said, went up in her district. It actually went down by 18%. She, and she's been prosecuting people. He said that she hadn't been prosecuting any, I mean, he's basically lying. He's, he's destroying education. They can't even study Shakespeare in full in Florida because they find <laughs> some parents find that offensive. It's like what Shakespeare came out in what the 14, 1500s. Here we are in 2023. And now um, you know, how many years, centuries later, people have a problem with Shakespeare and their kids reading Shakespeare, even if Shakespeare was vaguely vulgar, um, it's written in old English. So your kids probably wouldn't even understand what they were reading in the first place. But that then there's um, with, with, with how the, the teaching standards, you can't say gay, he's going after businesses. At this point, he should not even be the um, second, con the second ranking, you know, um, Republican for the for the um, Republican um, candidacy, yeah. but he yeah. is, and he, we've said this all along. Trump is dangerous because he's a criminal. He's going to get handed his because uh, that judge is not playing. But no, she's not. She Ron is DeSantis, not. Like, but Ron DeSantis is more dangerous because he puts his hatred and ignorance and bigotry and victimization of himself and other white people into law. He puts it into law. And once we were talking earlier about how our legal system moves very, very slow, it also moves very, very slow when it comes to repealing laws. Do you know what that's gonna take for them to remove all of those laws that DeSantis put in place, they're going to have to go before their state legislature, which is which is controlled by Republicans. Even if, they get a, even if they get a Democratic governor, it's going to take decades to remove these laws that he put in place. So we don't need that on the national level. This is someone who will gut the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments of the Constitution. This is someone who will tell DOJ to get rid of the hate crime, the hate crime statute. This is someone who everything that he will just wipe away with a brush of a pen will have to go before a right-leaning Supreme Court. And we already see what they did to affirmative action, what they did to that um, the um, Inclusionary Act, the LGBT. Well, I mean, it's so funny that affirmative action, It what it also did is it made sure that the HBCUs, that money that Trump supposedly gave to them, null and void, they'll never see a dime. Um, it, it's really interesting that Florida and Texas allow a dictator to run their state. And to be honest with you, I don't even want to talk about Ron DeSantis anymore. Uh, as if he doesn't exist. I don't like to give, he, he is who he is. Mm -hmm. And clearly Florida is another F. It just keeps showing that whatever our for founding fathers had in place, there's a couple things that are missing now because the checks and balances aren't there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Vaisha saying it's gonna take really long to get those things repealed. Then that means we're not a democracy anymore. And so I, I, in my mind, I don't give a fuck about Florida. I'll never go there anymore. I'll never go to Texas again. And I guess there'll just be a lot of places I won't patronize or, or, or give anything to. Or, you know, if there's a sporting event, you won't catch me. You know, I think that now is the time for all citizens to stand at attention. But they don't. You still have Beyonce taking herself down there to perform. You still have performers that don't give a they go. You still have people who help Ron DeSantis, you know, that's all like, and they help Greg Abbott. Yeah. So at the end of the day, who am I? I don't have all that money, but I know rich people like to be around other rich people and they will adapt when fascism comes into form because they have enough money to help their little kids. Most yeah. of the rest of us don't. Yeah.
I think um, you had mentioned the HBCUs. I think one of the saving grace for many of them is that because they are land grant institutions, that, that funding, that particular funding cannot be touched. Yes, it um, can be touched actually. Right not, not with the, not with the, not with this, the, the disbursement of this particular law. I, not with that law, but yeah. I actually heard that they have not gotten their money. No, they never, they never did they because never they never got it. And, and they probably won't because that's another thing Donald Trump does. He always says he yeah. did something and he never did. And yeah. actually he never, the thing is that he promised it. What he ended up doing was cutting it all together. He actually cut their, um, because when I got. Um, well, it's in his talking points. It's how he, he tells is. people that he did it. But you when know, I got. When I got the ask from um, Fisk, the alumni ask several years back when pre when Trump was president, they, they specifically said that that the federal government had cut their funding by twenty three percent. Wow! Yeah. But this is my whole point. We have black performers that really aren't doing enough. No. They're acting like, you know, it, there that there's nothing going on in this country. There's so many that have not stood up for women's rights. It's unbelievable how many of them don't. Uh, to me, Taylor Swift, hands down, a goddess, wonderful. I could go and sing her praises for a very long time, what she did for her staff, for her people that work for her. Give everybody a $100,000 like bonus. This girl is for real. She's for real. She stood up to both DeSantis and... Um, and Abbott and had them coming for her. Did Beyonce do that? Nope. Nobody but then she turns that. around though and dates a white supremacist. I mean, there, who's you a have, white supremacist? Taylor's last boyfriend. That there was a whole big thing. He's about, not a white supremacist. That's that. He's not a white supremacist. His dad is a broadcaster. He's the not one with a the tattoo. Supremacist. He's not with the one in the band. No, not that one. My who's that boyfriend? Matt Healy. Matt Healy from he the was. band. He's not a white supremacist. Matt Healy is just a kid who's a little rich kid uh, and not just a little rich kid. He is a peerage kid. Very different. Uh, they just think differently. I'm sorry. You know, I, no, not everybody is a white supremacist because. They no, there was, there was specific reporting on that, though, on that particular. Um, that was very specific. So getting back, getting back to DeSantis. Uh, here's a comment here. Yeah. Sophia Jacob. She's still uh, the best. Um, Sophia from Ottawa, thanks for dropping in. Usually she's on the dropping in on the morning vibe on Monday and Friday mornings. She says DeSantis needs to go sit down somewhere. He's dangerous. So Aisha, who's more dangerous, DeSantis or 45? There is no or. They're both equally okay. dangerous for different reasons. I mean, DeSantis was at Guantanamo. There have been people who recognize him from all the beatings and, you know, you know, so it's like, but he denies it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and I I mean I I mean they're different God only knows what else he did. They're dangerous for different reasons. Yeah. Very, but they're both equally dangerous. Neither one should be ruling this country. Shaming oh, wow. people, making them be naked. He's a he's a very perverted guy. You can you actually can tell from his concepts about Romeo and Juliet, he said exploited uh teenagers. You know, really, most of your kids in Florida won't even know what an iambic pentameter is, let alone the ABCs, because you probably think those are racist, too. OK, and so, then, you know, well, those are, uh, you know, CRT where that was code. Let, let's tell them how Harriet Tubman used sounds and stuff going, you know, oh, my God. And, and they have this thing. Here's my thing. He is letting Prager you. Yeah, do all of the um, all the materials Video. for the entire videos and stuff for the yeah. entire state. Frederick Douglass, someone broke that down, and it was like Frederick awesome. Douglass that Frederick Douglass actually got inspired to read because of what he overheard the slave master say to the wife that um, wanted to teach him just the alphabet. You know, but, it wasn't because it was he didn't get a benefit from being enslaved. When it was when he got out of it that he was like, "No, I'm going to do this because it, what you said last week, Jill, really stuck with really stuck the point that you when you quoted Van Jones, it's like saying, you know, my piano teacher molested me, but at least you got to learn piano, right? right. I mean, it, it doesn't 
it's like, see, I mean, there is no benefit. There was no benefit to enslaving people. Oh yeah, you got raped. We sold your. We raped your wife. Um, we beat you to death. We nearly right. beat broke you to death. Family, yeah. yeah, we took your baby yeah. and fed it to an alligator. Yeah, yeah, we took your baby and fed it to, the, to an alligator. Yeah. Hey, but at least you know ne- you learned how to put a horseshoe on a horse. I, I mean, n- none of none of benefit what even. But here's the thing. Here's where that logic even falls flat because. So you say that there was a benefit, right? But then you had slave codes, black codes, Jim Crow. People couldn't get jobs. They couldn't own land. They couldn't vote. They couldn't do. They couldn't do anything to use those so-called skills that you said that they got. Yeah, but they want that back. They There's don't no betterment. anything on any amendment in the Constitution. Not one. So here's the thing that we should take away from the Montgomery brawl: is that each state. Each state is on their own and on many levels. And the black people, you know, what's really crazy is that we're only like 14% of the population. And when you really want to go and break this down, we actually should be more. But the reason that we don't have that many people is because they basically killed us all. They've basically killed our people and they continue this genocide. That is what this is about because the reality is break that down. 14%. And we ran, uh, and we and we ran basically an industry of cotton. We ate, were instrumental for that. A seven billion dollar industry back in those days. So these want to sit up here and 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 get all freaked out. They would definitely put us back in chains. But the worst thing now, the one takeaway from the Montgomery brawl, if that didn't tell you anything, it was a that was our dog whistle. Like people get your boots on. We're about ready because this has to happen. If you want Texas to change, it's going to have to be full on. If we want Florida to change, it's going to have to. I'm going to jump in. Go ahead, Aisha, then I'll jump in. And the thing too about DeSantis, think about- You can't wait for these white people to change this stuff for you. They're not going to. They're on a roll. But think about it this way too. This thing, even with DeSantis, with the education piece of it, these kids already don't know what the three-fifths compromise was about. It was about that population deficit that Joe was talking about. There were more enslaved people in the South than there were white people. So right. not just because of the federal statute with funding and all of that and representation, the three-fifths compromise was to dilute the power the holding power, and particularly when black people were um, out, it, um, were emancipated, what was the first thing that happened? And they got the right to vote. They elected former enslaved people to the House and Senate. That's why the right to vote is so powerful. Because you know, when you have political power, and, and this is the this is true all across the board. When you have economic power, it can help buy you political power, which helps to get you social power. And notice that they've dismantled all the pillars through which people, Black people specifically, can get economic power, political power, and social power. They keep us teetering on this thread of of survival because guess what? One day, because one day, they, some some of them are looking for that one day where they can light the match of that thread that we're standing on and burn it up and we just fall fall apart and we're gone. Yeah, but basically, as not to you know forget, Bob Marley always said, "Emancipate yourself from mental slavery," because that is what the only thing that keeps people from getting up and you know saying, "No, I won't support this system that he's doing. I won't go to that football game. I mm-hmm. won't." But you know, we couldn't even do it to take the knee because our passive to sit there and watch games. I mean, can you look, could could we have looked, could black people have looked any more ridiculous? How pathetic was it that nobody supported that man? How, I mean, it is, they're like watching football games. It was like, you could win this. Do you not know your value? No, because I want to watch football on Saturdays. For me, that was when I kind of stopped really. I evaluated how far can I fight for this? Because if you won't do it for, then what am I supposed to do? Okay. That was ridiculous. Oh, can't miss a basketball game or a football game. Oh, the world ends. Can't miss a 
barbecue on July 4th, those are the ones that Harriet Tubman had a problem with. Okay. All right. So I'm just catching up here with some comments in, as always, we appreciate your comments in real time. So Christy White says, you, you can't trust neither DeSantis or 45. Right. Uh, agreeing with what's, what's being said here. Also saying absolutely. So Sophia Jacob says, yeah, we ready. She also says, folks in Florida have a choice. They can use their voting power to remove DeSantis and the whole of the U.S. can keep 45 out of office by not checking his name on the ballot. Right. And you're, but you're going to have friends who smile in your face that are going to vote for him because some people, 71, I keep saying 70 million people voted for Donald Trump and yeah. they are most likely one in five people in your, when you're standing somewhere, take a look. It could be yeah. your friend who the did people, The people that I find the most, the most, well, let me see, the least trustworthy are those uh, Obama to Trump voters. Yeah. Because I realize in looking Crazy, at them, right? when they, that when was they, insane. and when they talk and you listen to them, you realize they only voted for Barack Obama to ease their own guilt of not really wanting to vote for a black man. Right. They did it to prove to themselves that they're not racist because they really didn't want to vote for the black man. But I have to, so I don't, I'm not racist. Cause I can say I vote, I'm not racist. I voted for Barack Obama, but then you voted for a racist. It doesn't make any sense. And those are people that you can't trust that. Those are the people that, um, Martin Luther King talked about in in his um, letter to, from Birmingham jail, the um, white moderates. Yeah, he did. There, it's still the same story. Mm -hmm. okay. You know. Well, and Joe Man Joe Manchin is another one of those that also. Yeah, he's. I Thursday. heard. I heard a report. He was saying that he's thinking he might leave the party. Yes. And become an yeah. independent. So what? Goodbye. You already <laughs> act as an independent. Good riddance to bad rubbish. But if you're going to caucus with Democrats still and be an independent, what's the point? Right. Um, but my point, my problem with him is that he got his power in the Senate nixed when um, Raphael Warnock got his seat solidified. Yeah. Okay, He got his power nixed. And now he wants more power because I promise you he's going to run for a third party. I don't know why he hates the Democratic Party so much, but wants to be a part of it. Dude, lead. Do us. He a was never a Democrat. He was yeah. just Dino in name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's jump on to the next conversation piece. And I'm glad that Joe brought this one up because I heard about it. It was a later late last week. U.S. Supreme Court blocks six billion dollar billion dollar. Purdue Pharma bankruptcy deal. So for those who are not aware about this story, uh, Purdue Pharma was one of the major distributors of Oxyco what's, what's the name of the drug? Oxycontin. 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 Or Oxycontin. As yes. And uh, they went to trial and they got a sweetheart deal. They basically got a, you know, worked out a deal with, I think, the, the Department of Justice saying that we don't have to admit that we were guilty. We're going to give six million dollars, and I found it interesting. The Supreme Court is pushed back on this re, re, real ruling. Sorry, Jill, what up with this? Um, so you're looking at I just did the math. So you're looking at a situation where Purdue Pharma was making thirty million dollars a month in their sales, and so the Sackler family, the Sackler family. Um, basically were the owners of Purdue Pharma. Um, and they were accused in 2019 there, before it had started to hit the radar about what was happening in the 90s um, and uh, early 2000s with opioids mm -hmm. and that people were dying in droves. Some claim that there might've been over 500,000 people who died, half a million. Although they've sort of gotten the numbers down a little bit around it, but so many people of all walks of life, you know, died from this uh, Oxycontin. So just to go give a little bit of a backstory, uh, it is a narcotics too, like, uh, and it should have been labeled a certain way, but they made sure the FDA gave them a different kind of label mm -hmm. that basically said that it only 1% of the population could become addicted on this. So mm -hmm. they hired a huge sales force of people, uh, beautiful girls, and they went out and they basically pimped them out to get different 
uh, doctors to sign on people for pain medication. So the issue is that pain medication is, you know, you have like a 40, they give them 40 milligrams. But the thing was how these representatives who work in pharmaceuticals, how they actually make money is when you raise the dosages on your customers, when your doctor prescribes you with higher dosages. So that's when pharma gets money. And that's when sometimes the doctors start getting called in to give lectures and speeches and they get paid like 10 grand a pop to go and talk. So basically all this started happening and then they were noticing all these debts. And so it started to come out. And then, uh, so the Sackler family was like, oh my God, did you guys really know? But they're saying that we knew about this. We didn't know. So they basically lied. They didn't even tell that the, how they got it approved through the FDA was that they basically paid off Craig Wright, who was the man at the FDA, who was a stickler at first, but they took Craig Wright away for a weekend. He came back, he worked for two another year, and then he quit. And when he quit after he had approved it and the drug was out in the market, he split and then went and worked for big for Purdue Pharma. He went and got a job. There was nothing to preclude him from going and doing this. So please. So he's an and he's compromised. So basically people were dying. Nothing ever happened. There's, you know, these people get misdemeanor things. There was a thing that came up once where they almost had them and they filed uh, where the lawyers that were throwing their lives on the line for a stupid Purdue, um, they got misdemeanor slaps on the wrist about, oh, uh, this was labeled wrong, right? Time went on, 2019, multiple state lawsuits started happening and coming for them. So this is when it got interesting. They decided to settle. The only reason they did this is so that they would turn over 30 million documents and pay 4.5 billion. And then a deal was reached that the 4.5 billion would be paid out over a decade. But they were basically, when they say over a decade, that means that their investments uh, and investment returns and interest would actually pay for this. And they, it would never hit them at all. Financially, that deal gave them full immunity and no one could ever go after them again. So then in the middle of all of this, it's uh, they decided that they were going to file bankruptcy to really, you know, it's like not enough that these, this is so crazy. They get a, a deal to pay 6 billion. And what do they do? Well, greedy, 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 go, well, let's just file bankruptcy on the company. So SCOTUS decided, no, you're not going to use that because this is not how, this is not how the bankruptcy laws are supposed to be used. And it's rather interesting that they did stop this because these are the ways that Donald Trump actually used all the time in order to weasel out of his in his companies by using the bankruptcy laws, misappropriating them when these people have money in the bank. They're not broke. They're going to walk away with money with these kind of bankruptcies. So in my opinion, SCOTUS has decided that they're going to listen to the appeals and both sides are going to come up and say what went on with Purdue and did they know or, or whatever. And um, then, but I started to think like, you know, that this is theater because this is the John Roberts court. And I think they're all a bunch of other than the girls, but I think they're, we know that they've already been bought and paid for that part of SCOTUS. So this is just Kabuki theater because somewhere all the, about Clarence Thomas has been going on and all his excursions and whatever. What if all these rich people are indirectly just people who have been greasing the wheel for Purdue somewhere, maybe their stock involvement. What if they have, how are they, all these billionaires, you know, they stick together, they're $11 billion in Purdue's worth. So how, maybe, maybe the wheels have already been greased, but they just threw a whammy right now to throw us off the scent because don't get excited. They're not going to do anything novel. If anything, these people will walk away without having to pay one dime. These were not drug addicts who died from OxyContin, by the way. These were people who hurt themselves, they were injured, whatever, and they were given a drug and they were systematically raised on increases. I have talked about having a doctor do that to me with when I turned 40 and raising an antidepressant. This is a systematic thing that goes on here. And unfortunately, everybody seems to think, oh, this is gonna be great that they're reviewing it. 
But this is John Roberts court and it's one of the most corrupt SCOTUSes ever. I don't really see anything coming from it. I don't expect justice. It's what I say because that Sackler changed something once before when his attorney Udell only got like a slap on the wrist because it was a phone call in the middle of the night. Our justice system is owned by rich people. This is just a game. Let's just watch how it plays. I was trying to find my um, original reporting on on this from some years back when it first came out. One of um, one of the um, problems that states attorneys have because the the one of the challenges when they got that when they did that first settlement, our state's attorney was the one leading this charge and getting all the other states attorneys to get on board with it. Was that they made this settlement and agreed to agreed to pay like $8 billion um, and plead guilty to like three crimes. But the caveat would be that the money would go to help states deal with their opioid crisis, right. but families, individual families could not sue them right. they for would. the deaths. And that was a problem that state's attorney generals had. And that's what um, this, this um, they, they've, they have, um, they've, they agreed to that, but now, after it, here's the thing: once they got that part settled and they got their little settlement, now they want to go and file for bankruptcy. And here's the problem with that: they had to pay out eight million dollars. If they're filing for six billion dollars in bankruptcy, they are trying to limit the the amount of money that they would actually have to be paid out because we know how bankrupt bankruptcy start you know can um you know stop your debt stop your debts from being collected. So this is a way for them to hold on to their money because basically they would be out of money. Now, this thing with the the, the US Supreme Court blocking the um, bankruptcy deal, like Jill, I'm surprised that they weren't in the pockets of this family because this family has a lot of money, very powerful. I'm surprised they haven't bought um, Clarence Thomas a boat or a house or something. You know, I'm sure they bought him something. I'm, I'm sure they have bought a girl. Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll find out soon because they're mm -hmm. digging into that. But um, them blocking that. This they're case could them. set precedent, is right. what you're but saying. They're, in a yeah, big yeah, they're going to tell businesses, big businesses, mm -hmm. hey wait a second, you can't just go in there and ruin people's lives and then say, oh, we're going to get rid of the business so we don't have to pay the settlement when you get caught. And another thing, in addition to sending out those women and, and bringing these doctors on and giving them corporate jobs and everything too, they were giving these doctors kickbacks and they were also giving them free Oxycontin pills to give to their patients. That yeah. was the big thing. That the samples. They were giving them the samples. So even people whose doc, whose um, whose uh, insurance said we'll only pay for X amount per month, yeah. the doctors yeah. could just give them uh, the you know the doctor says oh I'll write you ninety. And, and here's the thing, the dosages, and, and this is why they tried to get away with it. The dosage per pill stayed the same. It was the directions the doctor was giving them. They were being told how to give people to take them. So people were taking more. So instead of maybe taking it one every 12 hours or one every eight hours, they were telling people take two every four to six hours. I mean, so, also when they raised it to from mm -hmm. 40 milligrams right. to 60 was mm -hmm. called oxycoffin. Um, right. uh, that there were pills and pills found in people's, because the, here's the interesting thing. The efficacy of the drug was not a 12 hour span. When there no. was an actual test on a, a period of testing, their cancer patients dropped out and left. Yeah. They call it, it a half they were like, yeah, it had nothing for them. And the same happened. And then it was so interesting because they had a quote from a doctor where they got this whole thing about it not being addictive for 1% and under. Um, it was an actual, it came from an op-ed article that was written. There was no study. So on their documentation, they had something quoted as if it was a study. And this just goes to show you that if you play telephone long enough, like Donald Trump and all these people, it's like, what the f are they teaching people in these universities? How to be a 
liar because I got to say something and I hate to be swearing about this, but I have thought about this and I honestly look at every single rich person in America and say, what crime did you commit to get here? Because, and who did you hurt? Who did you rob? Who did you steal from? Because I'll be honest with you guys. I don't believe there's any one person who has gotten something other than maybe an athlete or maybe not even a musician or a performer. Like who did you to get where you are? Because that's my feeling. You can't be rich in America and, and be clean. There's no way in the Kennedy family, dirtiest uh, Trump's dirtiest. I mean, they, so why were my little black little relatives so concerned about do the right thing, be honest. Oh, that's right. Cause we went to a Christian church telling us all this. Yeah. But then they go out and do the exact opposite They're They were the, they're the worst people. Like, the worst. The, this feudal system has really been chugging along, hasn't it? Because now we all that's happened is the transparency opened up the door. We got to see who was on the other side of the wall. You know, we thought we were on the same plan in the same pool. But when the when the screen has come back and now we see these are swimming on the other side of the wall, people you thought were cool and they're not. And, and that one more think point about this, this half life of the of the prescription and ad, and addiction is that no they are one not has, salt of the earth. Yeah, but here's the thing: no one has ever under has, has ever explained addiction to people in layman's terms so they can understand it. So I will because I've taught this before. Here's the thing with addiction: when people take something for the first time and it gives them some kind of high or whatever. The next time they take it, they don't get that same high. So they are constantly trying to get back to that first high. And so they take more and more and more. Now, when it comes to this addiction with these pain med prescriptions and things, what happens is that people get used to the pain relief, the feeling of being relieved from whatever pain it is. But like Jill said, the half-life of the medication was short. So you might get relief for an hour, an hour later, you're back in crippling pain and you will do anything to get rid of the pain. Right. And then you realize that, wait, the only thing that makes this pain go away is this medication. So I'll take this medication. But when that pain hits again, I have to take this medication again. And so people start taking more and more and more of it. And it becomes a routine because they can function throughout the day without that pain. And the addiction isn't so much the kind of addiction that you see with things like cocaine and crack, like what I said about chasing that first high. This addiction is more an addiction of habit, of wanting to get rid of the pain, get rid of the pain. So I know that this is the behavior I have to follow to do this, to get rid of this pain. And what the doctors were doing was they were see, they were asking their patients about how are you taking this? How is it working for you? And when they said, well, you know, I'm, you know, I find that it, after an hour I'm back in pain. Okay, I'll up the dosage. So they up the dosage, but the half-life is still the same. I still, that part doesn't change. But I still think that, you know, people need to know that Purdue was the, they created the campaign on chronic pain. Yeah. Okay. They started it because there was a need to create, this wasn't a conversation. People had chronic pain, but all of a sudden when you create this thing, like, oh, everybody has chronic pain now. Oh, I've got restless leg syndrome. It created new divisions in pharmaceutical companies where people were think tanks thinking up, what can we do with this new pill that we invented? We got to find something for it because that's really how these things are getting attributed. And then they, you know, is it going to be a baby diarrhea drug? No, it can be a weight loss drug for another person. And that then therefore in advertising agencies, they put together all these compilations and they do the testings. And to me, the ad agencies need to be dragged like a on this because you have you have Madison Avenue all up in this pharma stuff and they are very key to yeah. why all of a sudden you know it was enticing to be talk to your doctor yeah. you tell him what you want well what the 
is that? You know, seriously, some people had pain, but you could, it suggested thinking too, in a really sick way. It was almost subliminal to be suggesting to people that they were sick all the time or that their pain was greater than something they could bear and they needed a pill. And that's where the addiction came into it. So for me, Madison Avenue is guilty, 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 hands down, because they start making buku dollars. And once they went over the counter or direct to consumer with the drugs, as opposed to just dealing with the doctors, all of that is where a lot of people got rich in this country and they didn't give it about who died and who did what. And to this day, they're still doing it. Mm -hmm. The FDA should be hanging its Head. It is a disgrace. It has always been a disgrace because we found out that the CDC wasn't worth either during the pandemic. So in my opinion, all of it is showing the whole pomp and circumstance. Oh, America, the great. And then the shit was as raggedy as because basically it comes down to this. They don't care about you. They figured out that if they bump up your numbers, your insurance kicks in at a higher rate when your drug milligrams are different and they could, the doctors could actually start consuming and eating that up too. So this is a really big problem. And to really sit here and say that these family were not gonna be and are not gonna be criminally charged, I can't tell you that I think that any of the parents or families who lost family members would forego the six billion and easily say, I want those under the jail. Because to me, this is why, yes, rich people are above the law. They will never get what this they deserve. Never, not in America. They are above the law. There is they don't even can't even be tried in the Hague during like the war, like every other country has to answer to somebody. But this is why people don't believe in this place anymore, because there are people who are dead because of greed. This country would be nothing without it. Maybe it would be nicer, but guess what? It's really disgusting because what they did and now fentanyl, we're going to hear about this in another, it's going to be another long story that you're going to hear what families and what folks and what politicians were allowing this to go down. And here's last, the other last, last comment, Aisha. We got to move on. Yeah. And here, here's the other thing too that um, I found in my reporting when I did this a couple years back. They weren't just um, telling people that about the chronic pain. They were telling them that they could pres prescribe oxycontin for any pain. So yeah, a person like comes in with a yeah. person comes in with a sprained wrist. Where ordinarily they yeah. would just give them high dose Motrin ibuprofen no they're saying here give them um the oxycontin you can give them that for that for a sprained ankle uh uh you know they've got um a, they hurt their shoulder you know playing baseball oh give them oxycontin for that they stub their toe give them oxycontin for that for things that they wouldn't ordinarily give it to that's why the numbers of people that were getting addicted got so big too because they anyone that came in and complained of any kind of pain whether if it was like over one over one or two on their little scale they were prescribing yeah it's awful all right let's move on next conversation piece Developers have black families fighting to maintain property and history. Jill? So in South this Carolina. A, this is somewhat a continuation, somewhat a continuation of what, we, what you were talking about a few moments ago, but go ahead. In South Carolina, there are families right now fighting for their lives, like with their homes. These are ancestral homes that are from the historic settlement communities after and during and after slavery, like the Jonesville historic Gula neighborhood. Um, so in 2017, there were some state reforms that Trump uh, and the Republican Party had been involved in, and Trump was like, whatever. And basically, they want their land. So what we're witnessing now in some of the court cases is they are, you know, foreclosing on people and trying to take their land. And, you know, we know how lawyers are, snakes. There's, you know, the good lawyers don't make enough to really go in here and, and really fight. And uh, we've seen plenty of bad ones. You know, everybody wants to be a millionaire, right? But they'll sell out the whole country to do it. They are taking these people's lands. That's the end of story. I was mentioning it's happening in New York too. Black people 
are being losing, going in, thrown into foreclosure with a certain judge. And I will come out next week with the name of that judge. He's just going crazy. And, you know, this is uh, what's happening. They, they are on a mission. And uh, these are Republican judges. They are on a mission and a tear because it's really, uh, we need our young kids to become lawyers and doctors and things. We need them to, they don't, we don't need any more rappers, y'all. We need y'all to go to school and start really helping your people. This is, this is not going to happen. You can't sing your way out of this or rap your way out because clearly rapping about it doesn't even wake anybody up to go and do something. These people need help and developers there are loopholes. The other day I heard Janet Yellen had made a comment like, really? I mean, two billion a year annually of people coming and laundering, can God for they're laundering money through the real estate community. Save it. I've been saying this for a long time. And these people act like we just fell off the you know, I didn't know that truck yesterday. I'm so angry about this stuff because it is such a disappointing thing to wake up and see your country this way. And it really makes me sick when I see like these, you know, Trump people too. It's like, John, he wouldn't even know you. As a matter of fact, he doesn't eat burgers like the way you think. I used to work for a chef in New York. I can tell you he doesn't do it. He atop this, no. That's all, all curated for his image because the parties and, you know, lobster and pastrami salmon and all of that. Yeah. Okay. So this image, this, this whole, and, and you, it's like, wake the up everybody because this is a movement of the rich, a class. They are taking us down. It is rich and poor here. This is a class war. And it's really happening. Aisha, you want to add anything about? Aisha, you want to add anything about the land issue? I actually Property have quite issue. a bit. I actually have quite a bit because this is part of my job when I worked for the Commission for Minority Affairs. They, it's, it's getting reported on more now, but this isn't a problem. This isn't a recent problem. Last time I worked for the Commission was 2008, and I started there in 2005, and so it was a problem then. They were taking these lands from black people over um, citing imminent domain. That was the thing until people started suing them. If you could pull up a, a map of South Carolina, Dr. Vibe, that might help. Um, where the Gullah people live, um, and my family is from that area, it's along the coast of um, South Carolina from Myrtle Beach all the way down through Charleston and into Hilton Head. Now, those areas were highly populated by black folks because why? Well, when the transatlantic slave trade stopped at these port cities, this is where they were left off. When black people were emancipated in South Carolina, where they couldn't go very far because they didn't have the means, the money. So a lot of them stayed on these lands. A lot of them sharecropped these lands with the um, slave on, former slave owners and the plantation owners, a lot of them were able to buy these small parcels of land and hold them, hold on to them and pass them down from, from family to family to family. So for decades, nobody bothered them. Nobody bothered them. But, and this is the reason I asked you to pull up the map. If you look at where they are, if you we're looking right where the, it says Atlantic Ocean. If you look at where those places are that the um, Gullah and the Geechee people own the land, what, what stands out to you? It's coastal land, which means there are beaches, which means it's great for hospitality, okay? It's a hospitality haven. So now they're realizing, oh, we can develop these and sell these people. So we're going to take people's land. So they started down there in Hilton Head in Charleston with these eminent domain um, laws. And basically, the government was being able to go in and take people's land and, and allow these businesses to come in and buy it up. And the businesses were buying it up so cheap. Some of these families are so poor. They might have the, the land is all they have that's valuable. They're taking pennies on the dollar for this. But you've got people who have had these lands in their families for decades. And this one particular woman, her last name is Wright, which my 
my father's mother was a right. So I was like reading that and I was interested because her family actually owned a lot. They owned a hundred laker, hundred acres of land on that coast at one point in time, my father's family. And they ended up selling it except for one parcel that they still have. And the selling of this land, they are allowing these people to come in and buy it up. Why? Because this, this is a state that like most of these states, when they take their money, where are they taking it from? They're taking it from Jill state. They're taking it from my state, but they won't get revenue from all of these little strings of hotels and little villas and timeshares and things that people are trying to build there. So they, they have, want to do Airbnbs. Yes, exactly. They, so they have actually is floundering at the moment. There's mm -hmm. there's some dead going on right now from what I've been reading. Mm -hmm. And but here's the other point just to add in on to you, not to interrupt you, but the way that they're also helping to devalue the land so that it's a little bit worthless and they can get their money. They'll do a phase one or environmental later and clean it up. Mm -hmm. They're building uh, things on the side, like a subdivision or whatever, and letting the sewage run off yeah. run in, in these people's, people's yards. Land. So in that way, it's like a form of harassment and a little bit, aggression and trying to get them to leave and to also get them at bottom dollar. And you know why they're able to do that? Because those are rural areas in South Carolina. And the one yeah. thing I can tell you that rural areas in South Carolina do not have is city sewage. Right. They don't have the city sewage things that you and clearly no protection. In, right. That you find in Columbia or Charleston. A lot of these people have the pump back down in their yard buried. To, to manage the sewage. And so they're going to come in and they're going to put in um, sewage, uh, sewers and things that funnel through the city, but their dump is into this uh, rural, rural, rural pieces of land. And the people right. who own those lands, because they don't have the city sewer system, their pumps aren't going to be able to maintain or or even manage the amount it's going to come from like a high rise of 160 units right i know i did read about there's one young rapper who has taken a community and revamped it down in georgia or somewhere in alabama or somewhere you know but he's not as known as some of these other big mouths that we have out here charlemagne and um uh, ice cube and every other body with their and and what like these are these are clear indicators where it's like can you get involved or can you do something it's really like it's just really sad what we have going on but no they want to go on Tucker Carlson's show and 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 be known on you know the the egos on most of the people who are successful in our community is what's so shocking to me the ego on them and this particular woman, though, she does have Tyler Perry helping you. And this this gets to why this is very a very tricky issue. Tyler is Tyler. I'll tell you this: it's a, it's a problem that money can't be thrown at because if if he could, all Tyler would have to do is go and buy the area around her, but he can't. So he's paying for her attorneys instead because it is because I promise you they have cited eminent domain in why they are trying to take her property and. She needs legal representation because you can't buy you can't buy it you can't buy it out. I just want to interrupt. I got some comments to catch up on. So, Cinema Canella, sorry, we finally got you. Yes, thirty million dollars a month. Holy, talking about Purdue Pharma. The sackler, yeah, yeah, and also uh, she says hello, everyone. Uh, Jill has a new fan in Canada, Sophia Jacob, saying, Jill, big up yourself. We need your spirit here to blaze banya fire <laughs> under this government too. You sure you sh you for sure sound like a scorpion. That's uh, my moon sign. That's my total moon sign. Can. That is so funny. Yeah. And Regina says, yeah, the chronic pain addicts are very different for, from the recreational types. Regina also says, Dope Stick is yeah. an excellent series that sows the seeds of what the Sacklers did, and it started decades ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wanna, can I just address? I think that chronic pain addicts, I don't think anybody turns it, you know, these people, 
when they were robbing stores and all the crime rates, they were robbing pharmacies and only taking Oxy. So this is basically saying, it's like if I'm a hamburger addict and I go and I rob the supermarket and I only take hamburgers from, you know, I'm not going to take a chicken, right? So for me, I think they're created. If there's anything America did, and it did well, even from Vietnam, it's had so much practice of making addicts out of people, television addicts, movie addicts, mm -hmm. I mean, clothes addicts, shopping addicts. I mean, that is American. That is capitalism at its best, isn't it? I mean, and, yeah. and here's the thing. Somebody's making money on it. So that's the whole key of capitalism. Your demise might be my comeuppance. So it's just a sick thing. Like, can it work? This is a real we have no philosophers in this country either who even have discussions, people who even have the intellectual capability in most scenarios, like other countries, you turn on even a show and you watch it. We've got real housewives and that stupid Andy Cohen. I mean, okay. who's, who's basically got black women acting like complete fools all the time and women. Okay. And let's be very clear though, street level drug dealers are not vacationing on the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. It's these families like the Sacklers, these families that own these big pharmaceutical. If they're called drug them. addicts, then they're called drug dealers, because that is to me, this is this. These are drug dealers. And that's how it goes. End of story. Okay. All right. Uh, anything we want to say more on the property in history? This story right. is this story is evolving. It's sad because they have been able to buy up so much land in the last wow now it's been more than 10 years mm -hmm. um but um yeah it's it's very it's very sad um i mean and it not, ultimately those attorneys will be bought off some way and those okay. families i have to tell Always. you those families are those families that live on the coastal areas the black families are very poor people the okay. land is all they have let's let's end off in a hopefully a little bit more positive note than what we were uh, just passed this week. I think it was on Thursday. Hip hop yesterday. turned yesterday. Yes. Hip hop turned 50 years old. Thoughts on the, the history of hip hop. Well, I just remember when I was coming up, people were like, Oh, it's just a fad. It's just a fad. It's not going to be around. And here it is. Here it is. What? Um, a year older than me. <laughs> So, uh, I, it has evolved. I, you know, I actually, yesterday on the um, actual birthday, I sat and I listened to, um, I listened to a classic hip hop playlist because there are several genres within there. You have your golden era, which is those late 70s, early 80s, and you have your classic era, the 80s through the 90s. And then, well, then I, I, comes I, the period I, after which it was dead and buried. So again, I don't jump in a lot, but the thing, what hip hop started as and what it is today is two yeah. totally different things. I agree. Yeah. And and that to me, I'm a little bit sad about. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't seen any interviews with the OGs, but I'd really like them. I'd love to get their comments, like a people like a cruel Herc. When you look at your the what you started today, what are your thoughts? Because it's it's not a beautiful thing out there. Yeah. If you ever if you get a chance, I wrote this um, chapter in a textbook. Their legacy is is now garbage. Yeah. Yes, garbage. that's what I think it is. Because uh, you'll never catch me playing anything from today ever, and barely from then, because it's a memory that you know I I'm 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 from a different era. Even when it came along, it was kind of like it really was a very male oriented thing for mm -hmm. me and I wasn't you know into sneakers you know I was kind of a girl's girl and that wasn't my thing you know and are you still a girl's girl <laughs> I'm a girl's girl I just wasn't it wasn't like I I, I enjoyed it and it was fun yeah. but it is not something that I think I've ever spent money buying any anything on so but it's, really, like with every, it's like with every genre of music it's always the generation before that is making it for the next generation. So for example, a lot of the people that were making it early on were baby boomers making it for Gen X kids. Then you have the Gen X, the Gen X adults, like 
like the Jay-Z's and what have you, making it for the millennials. And then you have the millennials who are now making it for Gen Z people. Nobody's and making music for the next generation. It just happens to be the ones that are listening to it. But when I say the next generation, I mean, that's who's listening to it. That's what I mean. Not making it for the next generation. I mean, it's interesting it's because Prince was, on the edge. Prince was a boomer, but technically, you know, his fans were Xers. Right. But, that's, what I, that's what I mean. But that was only because he was born so late you know, in the phase of being a boomer. Um, and so was I. Yeah. But, you know, rap was not something that real musicians, it had to be something that they came to respect or or look at and go, oh, it's interesting how they're using samples. That was the only way it started to become a little bit more legitimate. But it was kind of sad that like, it's like, I mean, it's innovative that when they took music out of schools, the kids figured out how to throw things together and make up songs still. It was sort of like give somebody a cup and a string and they're going to make a song. Um, <laughs> that was kind of nice to see. But but yeah, for me, no, it's it's a it's a real miss. I laugh at things. I have good memories of fun driving in a car on a road trip. But it's not like something that, like I said, I ever spent any money on. And, well, and I think me, that's I, what, I think that's what kind of makes the dip. What kind of makes the difference for for me for the time I was early teens through mid twenties. It it was well, your genre. generation. I mean, I was exactly. already in my twenties, exactly. and exactly. you know, I I could have probably I had a friend who was into it. They were like doing hip hop and break dancing and all of that stuff. But I definitely felt like our music, working with Prince, we were outsiders, and that they were interlopers, and they were really going to change um what we did and they did and you know prince struggled for a very long time after that to even i mean how ironic is it who's running his estate now a bunch of rap people and uh rap minded people and that's not really what the origins of who he was was so real dango haven't seen you or heard from you in a long time he says 50 years and question mark also <laughs> said hip-hop music like the message right. and then music like me neck me back i just go back to my oldies actually yeah. today i play i played a bunch of stuff by heavy d and the boys yeah and uh well, yeah, I, I was talking to my daughter about heavy d and the boys today actually because yeah, of, um, yeah. so sophie's Sophia says, chance, super, so, so, super dope to see and look back over the years of hip hop. Seeing the celebrations that have been happening over the past few months have been informative and revealed some things we didn't know about. True. Yeah. That's true. If so. you get a chance, I wrote this uh, chapter in a textbook uh, in 2011. The textbook has been reprinted. The chapter is called Casualties of War. And it really is about how hip hop changed post 9 11. And um, the commercialization, the real, the real push for commercialization behind it. And in there, one of the things I said. Next thing you know, um, you'll have hip hoppers on a, on Vegas on a Vegas strip, doing some kind of show. And I said that in 2011. Well, guess what? 2015, Diddy did it. He's also the, one of the people that I blame for the death of hip hop. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole other story. How I feel okay. about that man. All right, real yeah, dangle says heavy D and the boys. We got our own thing. Da, da. Oh, could, could that and, man and move? One, one thing I do have to say though about hip hop that was said, and I did say this. In my oh, book. wait, I bought Snoop, yeah, first rap album. I bought that, we bought it, right. and I did see this. My Maybe daughter. the only one I bought, you pass. All and right, Nipsey All right. yeah. The There's only thing one. about hip hop, the sad thing is that there is no longevity in the lives of rappers. And I'm not just talking about, um, I'm not just talking about uh, the ones who were killed. A lot, a lot in the last, what, 15 years have died from health issues. Yes, yes. Chronic, things like diabetes, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Anemia, uh, yes. cancer, heart yep. attacks, yep. strokes. A lot of them have been, have died from that. And, these are the ones mostly who did who did do revolutionary things in hip hop, but you know it, it, it's the control who owns their who owns their music, so they can't make and money. They have no money, and they're black they people, money, black and brown they're people. Black men, and they're black men, and they can't yes. get health care. And we know the struggles that black men have right. with their health. And these and they are like for heavy. We were talking about heavy D. That's what triggered it. Heavy D had a heart attack. Yep. Bismarcky. Bismarcky. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
a bunch of so it's here's like he uh, died, right? Did oh he? My God, I forgot he died. Didn't he? Did he die? I, think I can check. Okay, Snoop so Boy just died from um yeah. Cinema Canella goes, Snoop yeah. is cool. April Watson goes, Crush Groove is the second <laughs> soundtrack to my life. Okay. But what there we Prince go. song what Prince written song is on the Crush Groove soundtrack? Yeah, Biz Marquis died. Yeah, he did. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to him yesterday. But what Prince um Penn song is on the Crush Groove soundtrack? I don't remember. What I was? Love, I love Bazaar. Oh, right, right. Okay. All right. All right. Well, because Sheila E was in the movie. Yes, 50 years old hip hop. Congratulations, yeah. but it, it ain't it ain't what it was. It ain't what it was. The old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Ain't what she used to be. Ain't <laughs> what she I'm cool looking to the 80s and the in the um early to mid 90s. All right, some final comments here. Uh Real Django says, and it's good to have you back, Real Django. Haven't seen you in a minute. Says yeah. there needs to be some multimillionaire athletes to invest in our communities. Not handing out turkeys on Thanksgiving and inner city politicians. Shall I and hold my yeah, hand out property instead of turkeys? When we yeah. lost Kobe, that was that was it. Oh, see, and this is a this is an interesting perspective. Can Kobe could be hard rally to folks, and so could Magic uh, Johnson. Magic okay. Magic can't give any more away than he already does. I've seen this man take care of people in Africa, mm -hmm. buying things at charities. He's for real, you and know? he gives people jobs. Yeah, he's he's no joke, and and so was Kobe. It's just like, but this new crop, I don't know, y'all. Uh, we had one who like had his bodyguard hit Britney Spears. I mean, it's like they have no home training. These people. oh the 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 first trick in, pick in the NBA draft. Hey, yeah, that that whole business. Well, the, the little French is, boy. It was a tall guy. He's like seven foot five. He's French, yeah. Yeah, but the thing and, that and I don't he, he needed he was missing a sensitivity chip because when they ask him about it, first of all, I don't think he knew who Britney Spears was. Secondly, he's like, Well, I went in and I had a really nice steak for the evening. They're like, What did you think about it when you heard what your bodyguard had to do when he hit the woman? And he was like, I don't know. I went in and I had a steak for dinner. <laughs> yeah. I was like, This boy has no home training. Well, let's None. put it this way if we are relying on and I went, when I say entertainers, I mean the performers and the athletes who are entertainers, basically, because they're getting we can't paid rely on them. We can't rely on them. I mean, look, I, they've done nothing during Roe v. Wade. It's been crickets from okay. really a lot of people. It's been actually really embarrassing, especially in the Black community, in my opinion. Okay, another comment here. Sophia says, I knew it, Jill. You have a Scorpio, Scorpion spirit. We can spot our peoples from anywhere. <laughs> wow. That was That's telling hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. You score. And you know what? And I know a little bit about Sophia. Yeah. Sophia, you may need to come on this. You and Jill would be a great, give you the North American tag team trouble ruckus room. I think, <laughs> be, I think that'd be very, very interesting. But yes, the Scorpions my are blood up. blood pressure go up. Oh, stop Please. your noise. And then Real Dango goes, let's get it up here. Come on. S slow today. It sounds me when I hear the th the things that Jill and I used to say well, about what's going on. Well, it's the truth in a lot of ways. It's I suppose truth. we could put a, I could put a brighter twist on it. But here also Sophia Jacobs gives some, some of the ladies yes. of hip. Salt and Peppa, MC Light, Yo Yo, Queen Latifah, yeah. Roxanne Shante. You know so funny? Queen Latifah is now more of an actress than she is. It's oh, true. Yeah, yeah. And Yo Yo has a cooking show. Yeah, I know. Look, I'm telling you. Oh, oh, and oh, we have to, we have to sh say some, put a good feel over. You've had health problems, real dango. Oh no. Hope you're doing okay. Reach out to me on a back channel. Join our Discord group and come on in. And Sophia Jacobs bringing some more of the ladies of hip hop. Money Love, Lady Rage, MC Trouble, Rod Digga, Gangsta Buru, The Bat, and so many more. I actually wrote an article about MC Trouble. He was well, the first, you, first female and, hip hop artist signed to Motown. Queen Latifah is probably one of the most interesting transformations in entertainment 
especially from a melody. Because I remember her singing Ladies First. And look, I don't she know. Had a, but remember how young she was, too. Actually, she had her first album out when she was 15. I got to take it back. Fab Five Freddy, who's a friend of mine, was probably my first introduction of it. And first of all, he's an incredible painter, like artist, like unbelievable. Um, so intelligent and, you know, and also so social mm -hmm. and was able to move through crowds and move through worlds in New York, like, you know, with Basquiat and Blondie and all these people. And he was, and Andy War, all the, all that, like, that's really for real. Like, so for me, I would say that was where I got my education about how this thing was blossoming and working. And it was, that was the best part of hip hop for me, that era of like that burgeoning thing of it. Mm -hmm. What it's become, no. I'm a little bit like, no. you know, no. the party, oh, bees, no. party mm -hmm. bees and the this and the that. No. And it's no, just, no, 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 you know, they no, might no, be no. nice people, but the art no, that's no, coming from there know. is very pedestrian. No. But the, the guess, Fat Five Freddy era of Yo MTV raps, yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorites. Because my yeah. friend Sophie Bramley had the show in London of the original Yo MTV rap. She started it. It was her show. And then she was very good friends with Freddie. And then he got the, she ha executed. So it came out here in New York. So for me, and Sophie was a little French Tunisian girl who started that of Yo MTV raps and put it on the map in London and then she and Freddie and blah, blah, blah. So there were a lot of people instrumental in getting it into the mainstream. And I, I think yeah. they're unsung heroes too. So for me, yeah, Freddie's in the top bracket of all that. I mean, all and right. remember one of the first crossover ones was Run DMC and um, My Blondie's Rapture. Uh, yeah. Blondie's Rapture. Yeah, I mean, I one of, of the hip, the one, the cultural with, that took the sneakers and the Adidas and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Run DMC walked this way with yeah. walked this way with Aerosmith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are done. All right. Another epic conversation, family, as always. And uh Lala get better, real dango get yes. better. Yes. 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 we want both of you to come out fighting. Well, an album, a famous album, tougher than leather. I yes. see. And also, Jill, tougher remember than... last week you said you were listening to the Beastie Boys, so. That's true. I was sabotage. So true. <laughs> I know. Jen says, "Great conversation." Thank you know, you so I can be a contrarian too. Sometimes, some days I'm like, "Oh, oh man," you know, and then the next day I'm like, "Oh, I love the, oh my god, I love hip hop." You know, I just go through phases. So, don't hold me to it all because I just go through my moments. Like I just can't because. Today's hip hop really disturbs me because the voices from the, that era, they were political. They said yeah. stuff, they got done. And now today to talk about somebody's, you know, WAP or whatever, I just don't, think don't it's, even about, it's even gross start. to me. It's just don't like, they kill it. It's like, you totally killed it. Like uh, what I was doing something with, um, I won't say who the designer was. It was a designer and somebody did something with, He's like, you totally killed it. Totally killed it. Let's move on. Move on. Move on. <laughs> totally killed it. All right. Before we close it down, as always, we'd like the ladies to share their contact information. And I, it's it's always changing. So I'm not on Twitter. I, I know. I, I've, I've yeah. altered that. And I know, Aisha, you sound like you're still a little bit on Twitter. But let's get to. No, not Jill. publicly. Okay. Not so, so Jill, let's get to Jill first. I'm tired. Jill, no problem. Go ahead, Jill. Where can people find Jill you? Jill Jones Music, Instagram and Threads. And like Are I said, you? I'm on Blue Sky and something else. And Facebook is uh, Jill Jones Music. Um, and my Facebook has been kind of rocking a lot lately. Really nice, the page. I will, I will make sure I include that the next mm -hmm. time in the updates. And next up, we have Aisha K. Saget. So, According to what you're telling me, Aisha, the only thing you're on is Instagram. Discord and Discord. Oh, Discord too. Yes. I will make sure I update that too. I do Discord more than I do anything else because we have really yes. good conversations there. So that's yeah, it. Yeah, Discord is Discord is is cooking. It's cooking. It's really cooking. All right. 
So for myself, if you want to get a hold of me and we'll get me up here, let the ladies take a break from all the madness. Okay, you know what? I just did something wrong here. Jill's back. I'm back. There we go with myself. Here we go. You can find me website, the drvibeshow.com. Email dr period vibe at the drvibeshow.com. YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, The Dr. Vibe Show. Twitter, I'm very rarely on there, and I may be eliminating that in my profile at drvibeshow, excuse me, and Instagram at the drvibeshow. Maybe um, next time I will add my Discord and also Aisha's Discord. I think we're going to do that. All right. One last comment we got going on here. Cinema Canal goes, good night? I think so. Oh, it was a good night, and we're saying good night. So we're going to end off with this. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions. The name bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourselves grace, and don't just manage your time. Manage your energy. Thank you, everyone, live or on the replay. We appreciate We love you. Join. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put this information. I should have. They got to finish off with this. Hold on. Make sure you subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube especially. Subscribe and hit the notification button. Also, like the Dr. Vibe Show, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Just as important, join the State of Things Discord group on by, sorry, by emailing me, dr period, V-I-B-E, at the drvibeshow.com. And finally, if you're interested in advertising your product or service on the show, email me, dr period. V-I-B-E at the D-R, V-I-B-E, S-H-O-W dot com. All right, that's it. That's all. I think there's one more comment. I'm being a nice guy. Oh, and April is saying also the get down mm -hmm. is the movie to watch. All right, so women, we're getting great. April, join the Discord group. Everyone else, these are the things you need to share for your in-between shows, all right? So we're going to finish off. God bless. Peace well. Keep the faith. And walk good. See you next week.